I want to bring up a new friend of the Foundry, Abdin Garza. Uh, he's going to be uh, sharing with us tonight, and so I've, I've warned him of a couple of things. I've warned him that uh, I have two questions I'm going to let him answer for all of us before I let him take it away. So first of all is, is give us like a minute-ish spiel of who Abdin Garza is. Abdin Garza is a uh, former retired sales manager for AT&T for 33 years, who became a pastor. I've got a weird name, Abdin, and it's Hebrew, and it means servant. And how a Mexican-American got a Hebrew name, who knows, (laughs) but I got it. My parents gave it to me, and I'm owning it. There you go. There you go. And I serve at uh, Northern Hills United Methodist Church. Yeah. Woohoo, Matthew, Matthew had a hand up. He's, he is celebrating. There's some other folks here. So we're so excited about that. Okay, so the this or that for tonight, whether or not you guys have asked it or not, was sweet or salty? All right, Abdin, sweet or salty? Salty. Salty. Okay, how many salties are in the room? Okay, sweets? I think the sweets might have it. I don't know. Both. Both. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Well, you can always find a way to... Well, uh, decisions are hard. I'm very indecisive, so I feel that. I feel that. Anyway, Abdin, we are so glad you're here. We're so appreciative of your time. Um, thank you, and take it away. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to visit with y'all. My name is Abdin Garza, and I am um, one of the associate pastors at Northern Hills United Methodist Church. Uh, my title that I've given myself is community pastor. Technically, I'm, a, I'm an associate pastor, but I use community pastor because my my job is to be out into the community and uh, bringing, uh, meeting new people. Uh, I, I'm part of the outreach ministry. We have two campuses at Northern Hills. We have one on 60, at 1604, and then we have a ministry center campus. And my role as the community pastor is to be out on the street and meeting people and introducing them to Christ and trying to be the hands and feet of Christ into the community. Um, and being a neighbor to the community. Um, we do a lot of things at the ministry center uh, to serve the community, but our main, four main tenets are worship, prayer, human services, and ministry with the community. With ministry in the, com- in the community or to the community or with the community is one of the biggest things that we do. Um, I thought I would start by answering a question that Sarah and Reed asked me. Before, uh, when they asked me to, uh, to talk today. And the question was, how have you unexpectedly encountered God and God's grace in your community? And um, I decided to, the best way to answer this is to share uh, some stories about three amazing women that I've had the opportunity to work with over the last several years. Um, these people, these three women, have been used by God in some amazing, wonderful ways. And they continue to be used in a lot of wonderful ways. These three women are moms and grandmoms. And they they know what it's like to have to choose between paying their electricity bill, their light bill, and buying food for their kids. They know what it's like to be in the line of a food distribution center at 4 a.m. in the morning, waiting in their car for food to be distributed at 8 a.m. so that they could have enough food to feed their family and get back home in time to send their kids to school. They know what it's like to be up at 5.30 riding a bus for two hours to get to a job by 8 o'clock so they can work all day and get on a bus and ride for two hours to get home to do it the next day and the next day and the next day. And they know what it's like to do that for a job that just barely pays over a minimum wage. These are ladies who... There's a new term. It says people with lived experience. And these are ladies that live in difficult times. 
I met Lee several years ago at a bus stop here in San Antonio on a hot summer afternoon. And you know how hot it gets in summer in San Antonio. And we were handing out bottles of water and snacks. And I got to say hi to Lee. She's a sweet African-American lady. And we talked, and I got to know her over several Tuesdays, because Tuesday Connection is what we were calling it. We were going out to a bus stop and offering water. And I got to know Lee, and I invited her to our church to visit. And she said, thank you, but that's, uh, I already have a home church. But I got to meet her oh, several times and got to talk to her. And I was surprised several months later where she showed up at the ministry center. And I was really surprised that she came in and I, I thought, I don't know if she's going to like it because the ministry center, we have our only service is called La Roca and it's English and Spanish and, and it's a flavor of, of Spanish. It's a Spanish service that's translated into English, but we do it at the same time. And I didn't know if she was going to like it, but she was there. And it turns out her parents are from Cuba and she's fluent in Spanish, and she loved it. And Lee, from that first visit, has been part of our congregation for several years now. Lee is a leader. Lee was displaced during Hurricane Katrina. Her and her family were refugees here. They came with nothing, and they've had a difficult time of it. But Lee has become part of our worship team. Lee has established a youth children's choir group called Roquitas, Little Rocks. And, uh, and she has also been involved in almost every outreach event that we've had in the community over the years. She's right now serving as our music leader for our spring break VBS that we have at the Ministry Center this week. Lee's an awesome woman. Sonia, I met while knocking on doors at one of the San Antonio Housing Authority apartments. And I remember knocking on the door of every apartment, 65 of them, and inviting them to a community event that we were doing in their, in their uh, I guess it's their community room. And I remember knocking in the door and, and Sonia graciously answering and, she, and I introduced myself and I said, we're going to have a, a, a back to school celebration. Can you, come, on, come on over, it's this Saturday. She said, I don't know if I can make it, but we'll see. She showed up. I met with her. A few months later, I knocked on her door again. She must have thought I was weird knocking on, knocking on her door. I knocked on her door and asked her for, to see if she wanted to come to the, her family wanted to come to the Thanksgiving celebration that we were doing. I don't know if I can make it, but maybe. And she came. About a month later, I was knocking on her door again. You want to come to the Christmas posada that we're having? It's a Christmas celebration. I don't know if I can make it, but we'll see. She came. During that time, I was also uh, volunteering at Oak Grove Elementary, and all the kids in the community knew me as Mr. Garza, not Pastor Garza, Mr. Garza. And I remember knocking on doors, and the kids would come up, and they'd say, Mr. Garza, and they'd go, Mom, Mr. Garza from Oak Grove is here. And the moms would say, what did you do? They were just, they thought that I was there to get them in trouble. Fast forward about a year and Sonia comes to the ministry center. She calls me on a Sunday morning and says, do you have child care? I said, yes. And she showed up. And she has been one of the most loyal members of our La Roca congregation. Sonia, like many others that I work with, are couponers. They know how to use every single coupon known to man, and they use it well. And she can get all kinds of free stuff that she then buys for the ministry center and donates it. And so we have tea and we have lemonade, and every time we have an event, we got it there because of their, her. 
Gabby came into the ministry center from the bus to use the restroom and get a drink of water. And by chance, I was walking through the lobby. Some people call it the narthex. If you're really churchy, I call it the lobby because that's what I think it is. And um, she asked about what we were doing here. And I, I told her. Most people sometimes think we're part of VIA. And I, I shared with her some stuff that we were doing, and she left. Several months later, at the beginning of summer, Gabby calls me up. and She goes, you don't know me, but I, um, she was elected president of the San Antonio Housing Authority resident council for her area. And they were getting tired of the kids in the summer not doing anything but hanging out in the, park, in, in the, in the playground. And she asked, can we do a Bible study for kids at their community? And when she asked, I said, Lord, I don't know how to do a Bible study for kids. I have no idea how to do this. But I said, yes, we do them all the time, and we'll be out there. <laughs> and we did. And throughout that summer, that Bible study grew with all these children, 20 kids, 25 kids. And then summer ended and fall came, and we morphed it into homework help in the community. And Gabby was leading that, helping us. And then that transformed into other ministries that we were able to do in other apartment communities for homework. And that's something that continues today. These, um, these ladies have been awesome. And I mention them because during the pandemic, they were serving their community because they love God. And what they did is we, the church received a grant for food. We had no way to deliver it. And what they came to us and said is, we have people that don't have cars, and they can't make it to the food distributions. Can you get us the food? And we said yes. And then they went door to door and delivered the food to all the people in their community who could not get there. Either they had one car and the family member was working, or they had no car and they had to ride the bus, but they couldn't get to these distributions. And they served, and they did that. The reason I tell you about these people is because the Lord placed these ladies, these people with lived experiences in my past, in my path that I didn't realize what he was going to do with them. See, these ladies even provided a mini pantry in their homes so that if a mom was hung, had kids that were hungry, they could go over and get an emergency bit of food to make a meal for their kids when, the, when their funds ran out. And these ingredients that they made made good meals. And they help us now design meals for our pantry when we deliver, uh, share food from the ministry center. The thing that's interesting is that all these ladies live in my area of town. I live on the northeast side. Middle, middle income, middle income area. And they live less than three miles away from me. And I've lived in Northern Hills for over 30 plus years. And I had no idea about the need that's in the community that I lived in. It wasn't until I started in the ministry and started getting out there that my eyes were opened about the need that was right next door, the need that was right at my doorstep. And what I learned, I learned a lot of things because of that. I learned that my eyes were closed for a long time and God opened them. I learned that when God calls you to do something for him, he is calling you to join him where he is already working. 
that you're not going to have to go it alone because he's already there. No matter where you go and no matter what you're called to do, God is already there. And he's just asking you to join him. I learned how people that have limited resources can be so resourceful and do so many wonderful things. And I learned that his plans are way bigger than any plan and any dream that I could ever have. And I want to share a story with you about that. Last year, the ministry center was invited to apply to be part of a a learning initiative. And what that meant is we could apply to be part of this learning initiative, and it was a six-month program. And it was a a challenge for nonprofits or faith-based organizations to engage with people with lived experience in the community to identify needs that would address health inequities in the community. And what they wanted to do is make sure that we, who are faith-based or nonprofits, include the people that we're trying to help in what we're trying to do so that we don't go top-down and totally miss the mark. And so they wanted us to include people with lived experience. So I applied for it. And they accepted us. And they said, who's part of your collaborative? And I said, Lee, Sonia, and Gabby. We're going to be partners in this. And we joined together as equal partners in taking these classes and learning how to address and design plans to address inequities. And when we completed it, We were one of several that were invited to take part in phase two. And one of the reasons was because we were led, co-led by people with lived experience, people that had been in it, that know what it's like. And so we submitted our proposal And we used examples of their experiences in life on how we would make changes. And one of the challenges to health in the big scheme of things is education. If you're educated, you usually have a better health result than people that are not as educated. And they said that. And they said, we want to promote what we call lifelong learning. And they shared experiences in their life where there are tons of opportunities to go to school. Grants, Pell Grants, all kinds of opportunities to go to school. Especially in a situation where maybe you weren't able to. But there's opportunity costs for that. Meaning that to go take advantage of these grants, you have to have child care. You have to have a way to take care of your kids while you're going. And these, gr- these child care organizations offer free child care, but you have to be in school. And to be in school, you have to have child care, and sometimes they don't match up, so nobody goes. And then there's a plethora of ideas that you have to, you know, paperwork you have to fill out, and it's too cumbersome, and, they, and it's challenging. And we looked at their lives and what they were going through, and we shared that in our grant request, in our plan. And we were awarded a grant of $1.7 million to address health inequities by supporting lifelong learning. And what I will say is that we would not have even had an opportunity for the grant if it hadn't been for Gabby, Lee, and Sonia, people with lived experience that were part of this collaborative that did this. And what I'll say is that if we hadn't offered Lee a bottle of water at the bus stop, or we hadn't knocked on Sonia's door, 
or if we hadn't by chance said hi to Gabby when she walked in to use the restroom at the ministry center, none of that would have happened. And those things that happened were all part of being a good neighbor, of being out there and just welcoming people and inviting them. And so what I, I, I just wanted to share with you is that there are going to be times when you feel called to do something. Where God says, I need you, uh, you're going to say, God wants me to do this. And you're going to say, no way, I can't do it. And I can tell you that happened to me multiple times. Until I realized that God is already there and he's asking you to join him. You don't have to go it alone. You never have to go it alone. And it's scary. And there are challenges. But God's already been there. And God uses people that you would least expect to his glory. Including us. Who don't think that we have much to offer. So, being a good neighbor is serving the parable of the sheep and the goats and the parable of the Good Samaritan talk about neighboring. You know those stories. And it's all about serving. And God calls us to serve. And he can do some wonderful, amazing things when we step out and do that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that you call us to serve and to be a neighbor. Help us to have the confidence to know that when we go, when we take that step of faith, that you are already there. And you're just inviting us to join you. Lord, there's so many glorious things that you would do and can do if we step out in faith and honor and glorify you. Help us to open our eyes to the opportunities that are there across the street, across the world, or just right in our own neighborhood. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.